Alright, one, two... Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Plutonium Show. Welcome, I think it's episode 96. We said we'd stop saying we think and we would know. Oh, and yes, man. it is episode 96. Ah, see, there we go. There we go. I was pretty, I was 90% certain. 96% certain? 96%, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. In four episodes, I'll be 100% certain. So, <laughs> Hope you'll be there with us. We can all be 100% certain together. Um, one thing we're not 100% certain about is uh, the point of Megxit. But, you know, we'll get to that. Hope you've all been well. I don't think we've seen you all since uh, Easter. So if you celebrate it, hope you had a wonderful time. If you don't, hope you had a good long weekend. If your country observes that. Um, it looks like King Charles had a had a good Easter. Yes, he did. It's very nice to see that he's well enough to not only go to the service, but he went out to see well-wishers and he shook their hands and spoke to them. And that's so encouraging because the whole reason that cancer patients are isolated sometimes or encouraged is because of their immune system yeah exactly so it tells us that he's doing well mm -hmm. the treatment must be going i would i would assume very well yeah because you have the best doctors you are the king of england so they're not going to let you be in a compromising position so it would have had to be some sort of certainty which gives us a little bit of i guess uh what's the word i'm looking for hope yeah i suppose so a few things have happened over the last week or so that have really made me once again, probably for the thousandth time, question, what was the point of Megxit? And I'm not saying, you know, in the sense that it's clearly been a failure, but I literally mean, what, what was the point? If, if, if you have people who had everything anyone could ever hope for, mm -hmm. and, and then some, really, destroy everything i think any sane person would question for what especially when they went away to the to america and basically repeated what they would be doing in the uk anyway you know going to as we know now because of last week i think it's the first time she did it a children's hospital mm -hmm. or having one of their many fake royal tours where they'd go to new york and have you know police protection and everything cordoned off and you know, pretending that they're on these official visits to schools. Mm -hmm. So what, I don't, I don't get it. You would have done that and maintained the love of the UK, the Commonwealth, the world, and the support of the monarchy, which of course they would like to, us to believe that they didn't have it. Of course, but you know, again, everything that comes from their mouth should be questioned and scrutinized. But this is just it, right? It, we see Charles doing his thing. That's exactly what Megan wants to do. She wants to be seen. She has to call the paparazzi to come and see her instead of, oh, she's a royal. We'll go and see her because she's doing a royal engagement. Yeah. She wants to be important, but if you're a member of the royal family, you're automatically important at an event. Every single thing that she wants to be, the royal family would have fulfilled if she had just not had such a big head i suppose because that's what it comes down to right she has to be the biggest fish in the pond she mm -hmm. has to be the head honcho and so when you're going up against the queen of england and the future queens both camilla and catherine well sorry you're plain second fiddle but that's still amazing that's still a great position to be in but for her it's never enough she has to be the belle of the ball it's just so fascinating to watch because when she visited this children's hospital, LA Children's Hospital, and I just thought, well, first of all, can we just <laughs> address, you know, the elephant in the room, I suppose. Is she seriously still pretending that people are falling for her act? Because I saw footage of her at the hospital reading to these kids. And, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. If I didn't know anything about her and I was just watching her, I'd be like, Oh, okay whatever you know she's because she was reading in a very animated way and you know treating them actually as though they were toddlers when they were much older which was bizarre yeah she she's not good at reading the room no she really even the type of books that she selected were not the correct they, they weren't the right age for for her audience i'm surprised she didn't read her book i'm surprised too 
my goodness, everyone thought she did, yeah. but she didn't. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, that takes either some restraint or maybe someone in her PR team's like, look, <laughs> you it's a bit on the nose, all right? We know your entire act is on the nose, but that's a that's a bridge too far. Yeah. But it's just so bizarre seeing her there. Now, word has it that she actually went hours before the Princess of Wales announced her diagnosis. So she went on the 21st of March, but then withheld the photos for a week and a half. I don't know if that's... Look, let me put it this way. It wasn't out of respect for Catherine because she has zero, actually sub-zero respect for Catherine, but it was because she knew the backlash. Mm -hmm. If she went ahead with this, yeah, I think she knew that people would... Oh, actually, sorry, I just had, had an epiphany. I had a moment. I had, you know, like the light bulb moment. Yeah. It was because she knew that she would probably be overshadowed in the news. Yes, yes. It didn't cross my mind. I was actually wondering if she switched PR firms recently because you know how she goes through them, you know, like uh, like underwear. <laughs> but I was. it was either that or you're right, you're right because she knew that she would be drowned out in the news cycle. Mm-hmm. Which is funny because that's all she ever tries to do to Catherine and William and everyone else. It's like, oh, even Princess Eugenie. Uh, Eugenie, yeah, at her Eugenie. wedding. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, and she's supposedly her friend. Apparently Eugenie's also a mean girl, by the way. Mm. People don't like her. And uh, I don't know if it's true, but you do think birds of a feather. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and also, yeah, I mean, I... I I don't know. I just have to kind of step back when you when I don't know, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I don't know either. All I do know is there's footage of this old video from 2011. Catherine's very first Christmas service as a married, as a Dutch, the Duchess of Cambridge at the time. And usually kind of doesn't push Catherine. I have to be fair. People say, oh, she shoves Catherine out of the way. She si- kind of walks past Catherine, mm. but ca- close enough that Catherine felt it. And Catherine just, uh, as nice as she is, even her kind of dagger eyes are still nice. <laughs> but she kind of just gives usually like, really? Yeah. And then she walks ahead of her, flips her hair, and then kind of looks at her again. Like, you want to try me? So I'll see if I can find the video. Um, but yeah, usually it was kind of like, you know, asserting her dominance or something. I oh don't my know. Gosh, what is this? The animal kingdom? I don't know. And like, to be fair, I, I think it's stupid when guys do it too. You know, when guys are acting all mucho, mm. I'm tougher than you. It's like, d- bro, I don't even know you. What yeah, are you yeah, doing yeah. here? Like, yeah. Can I, I just, yeah. yeah, it's it was, yeah, it was just, I don't know. Maybe if she feels like she's a princess of the blood and she deserves better, I don't know. Uh, so, <laughs> if only she knew what was to come, right? Yeah, well, you know, a bit, a, a bit of a tangent, but um, yeah, it's funny how Megan. I feel like part of her failure, and this is just coming to me now, so it's you know, I haven't thought this through, so bear with me. I feel like with her pretending so hard to be the exact opposite of who she really is, mm-hmm. is probably the source of her failure. Yep. Think about it. If if because we've all seen through her, you know we. As humans, we can't put up an act for long enough. No. We're not designed that way. Our brains don't hold on to lies. We hold on to the truth. We remember the truth no matter what. Mm -hmm. And we struggle to remember lies. And with Megan, even though we've all seen through her, she still pretends that she's this angel descended upon this planet to um, envelop it in light and goodness. And she goes to hospitals, which is, again, her first time, and brings cameras. Let's... I think that was the elephant in the room I wanted to address. The cameras. Mm. Why is there a whole camera crew with you, Megan, when you're coming to see sick children and exploit them? The question is, (laughs) would she have done it if she didn't have any cameras? And we all know the answer to that question. It is no. She will only go places that cameras are. The only place that when she won't allow cameras is in her own house when she's no mask and the real her would come out yeah. but she has so many masks mm. that we always see the real her it always slips even when she's just changing masks that's what i'm saying i'm saying the jig is up yeah it's been up a long time ago uh, since the oprah interview i would argue well actually since the engagement interview yeah her mask fell even i was uh, we've said this a hundred times even i was this disinterested much younger person and i saw her and i was like huh (laughs) red flags yeah and it's funny because these sick children she had to wear a mask 
So I think that's the rule with um, in children's wards. I bet she fought about that too. Who knows? But um, did their parents have to sign a release? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't sign anything. Right? And there weren't that many. Yeah. It makes me wonder. I mean, I'm hoping the, the the ward is not full of sick children, God forbid. But there were really not that many kids. So I'm wondering whether these are just the ones that their parents agreed to be featured. Yeah. Because, yeah, she just used them. And she'd go pose next to each and every one of them and um, signed um, Polaroids, which, look, she's not a working royal. People say, oh, she's not allowed to sign autographs as a royal but she's not a, we keep saying she's not a royal right so i guess it's it's distasteful though it is distasteful which is totally down her alley almost everything she does in fact i would argue everything she does is distasteful yeah so it's exactly what she would do but it's just it leaves a disgusting feeling in your gut the idea of exploiting these children it's not the first time she did it remember harlem absolutely mm. and it's even worse because they're already in hospital they're already yes. vulnerable yes. what are they going to do not turn up to hospital that day yeah like they don't have a choice i guess but obviously there's the release form with the parents but a place where you should be sheltered from such evils and megan markle walks through the door yeah and 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 inflict herself upon you exactly i feel as though these hospitals especially in la where they know celebrities can come and be opportunistic Mm -hmm. they should ban cameras especially when it's children if you're seeing adults and they're not sick enough that they are aware and they're happy to be featured but minors yeah i hate family channels on youtube that feature children Mm -hmm. um my rule on this channel is as far as possible if i'm really not making a point I will not feature photos of even the Cambridge kids. Yep. Uh, they're not called Cambridge kids anymore. The Wales kids um, and even Megan's kids. Mm. I just don't like featuring people's kids. And many people feel that way. So it's w- it's strange when a hospital allows allows the footage of, of kids. I don't know. It, yeah, it really shouldn't be allowed. You're it's absolutely the wrong place. right. I think the only photos that should be taken in that situation, right? Let's, let's use a, a genuine example Mr. Johnny Depp, mm. when he did that. When he dresses up. and When yeah. he does that. I think the only photos should be the photos from the kids themselves. That, hey, can I take a selfie with you? That is exactly what happens when Johnny goes. The only reason the public knows of Johnny's visits is because the parents and the staff, and even if the kids are old enough, teenage kids, are filming on their phones. Exactly. How many people filled on their phones with Megan? Not, none that I can see. It was definitely official. Yep. It was official footage, official cameramen, professional settings. And, you know, um, you can tell from the quality. Mm-hmm. Like with Johnny's uh, footage, it's always, you know, either in portrait mode or it's all shaky. And you just know it's the angle is wrong. He's unaware. Yep. Megan is just performing for the camera. Even when she's reading the books, mm-hmm. it's a performance. Yep. <laughs> I mean, if there's video footage. Hold on. I didn't say that line right. Can we film that again? <laughs> now, we all know that Megan's... Uh, I keep coming up with different names every time I say it, like on the fly. So I'm like, what What have I not used yet? I don't know. Some of them are really vile and I'm not going to, like the ideas I get are really vulgar. Yeah, you have to know. filter them. It's like your own PR team built into your <laughs> yeah. head. No, 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 no. They're not going to like that. <laughs> yeah. My own bachelor producer, you know, because yeah. Megan was once described as talking as though she had a TV producer in her head. Yeah. Telling I, her what to say. I think that psychologists would have another name for that, but. <laughs> <laughs> so. Her brand, her TIG 2.0, because I can come up with anything right now on the fly. Um, we know it, it, it was, it's basically a failure to launch, a non-launch. I don't know. I don't know what was the point of her launching it on Instagram with nothing to sell or you know, nothing to display, nothing to advertise, absolutely nothing. And I believe she's still under 600,000 followers on Instagram, which is a, a far cry from the glory days of when they launched their Sussex Royal account mm. when they were still working royals. Yep. They broke records. Mm. Millions in a few hours. Yeah. They literally broke records. So again, what was the point of Megxit? I don't get it. Was it to fail? But, you know, we'll get to that. Um, I mean, we are in it currently. It's You're just pretending to be a royal. So what was the point? Except everyone hates you now. Exactly. It's like, oh, well, I don't like your royal family, so I'll make my own royal family. That's not how this works. Especially not in America. Yeah, yeah it's like, oh, man. It's, I, I, where, do you, where do you even start? 
uh, let's say, the establishments that have existed for hundreds or thousands of years in some instances, and she's going to start her own. Yeah. That is just the sort of level of narcissism that we see in her. It's delusion. Yeah, delusions of grandeur. One of the hallmarks of narcissism or mm-hmm. narcissistic personality disorder. Um, so with those followers, dismal as they may be for a duchess of her stature, everyone in the world loves her, the most famous, beautiful person that people like Catherine and even Queen Elizabeth probably were all jealous of. Let's not forget who we're talking about. There has been, people have analyzed her followers and there is a suspicious amount of them, a huge amount, who seem to be fake bots. Hmm. It's very easy to determine these things on Instagram. You know, the one of the easiest ways is just click on the profile. Is it, you know, does it have real photos? Is there engagement? Um, or is it one of those just blank or just ads? You know how it's, th- things just look off when it's a bot? I mean, in every social media account, it's very easy. You can tell when a genuine person is attached to account. And you can tell when an account's a brand. And you can tell when an account was created five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So in, in our community, we've all been saying for a long time that Megan probably buys bots not just on instagram there are bots that attack you know bots affiliated at least i can say this with with some certainty affiliated with the sussex squad Mm -hmm. i'm not saying affiliated with megan directly but megan is very much aware of the sussex squad she she and harry have personally thanked the sussex squad when they see them at events like invictus they acknowledge them all that and they're you know being the online Trolls. Uh, trolls that they are, Megan and Harry, or even just addicted to monitoring their news coverage online. Mm-hmm. It is very, very unlikely and far fetched to say that they're unaware of the hate and the bullying and the toxicity that their own clan is spreading, right? Yeah, I think anyone with even a slight bit of decency to them would not affiliate with a cult like group that does such horrendous things to other people. Yes. Even if those people are worshipping you, but again, it plays into the fact that Megan thinks she should be worshipped. So she thinks these people are doing it right and damned be any of the collateral. I think it's beyond even just being worshipped and it comes back to what was the point of Megxit. It's also... The point is to be destructive. Yep. To destroy the royals, to destroy those who didn't give her what she wanted and didn't put the ultimate crown on her head. Mm -hmm. And especially because of the failures of Megxit and the fact that she cannot attain any status whatsoever, Mm. it also ties into a little bit of a, well, I can't be a royal princess. I can't be queen, so you can't be queen either. You know, like a toddler chucking a tantrum. If I can't have the ball, then no one can have the ball and you pop the ball. Except the ball is the royal family. So... Good luck. Yeah, yeah. Good luck popping that one. I mean, she tried. So what ha- what's happened, I think, and some others online as well, is Megan knew that she was found out about the bots. And so this is just a theory, but putting it out there. Love to know your thoughts. Love to know your thoughts. Mm. Instead of letting people out her and reveal that she has a lot of bots and potentially paid for them. She wouldn't be the first one. I wouldn't be surprised if she also did it in the TIG days. I wanted to actually say this about the official royal account that broke records. Interesting. Yeah. I think it could have even been that as well because Princess, uh, Princess Catherine and Prince William, did mm. they have an account? Yes, they do. Did their account break records? I, I think their account predated Meghan and Harry's and so Meghan and Harry's broke the records. I, think. I, I wouldn't put it past Megan to be so vain that she was like, our account has to break records and it has to beat their account. <laughs> and that's sort of like, what are you, a 15-year-old teenager? Like, I love it when you pretend you're some mean girl. <laughs> it's, well, why is it accurate? I've seen way too many of them <laughs> in my life. So um, she... The theory is, by the way, that's very interesting. I have never considered that. Mm -hmm. And now that you've said it, 
Yeah. It, it, my instinct was to say, I don't think it was necessary at the time because people genuinely love them. Yeah. But it absolutely makes sense. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Because if we look at the, I, I mean, you can argue the variables. All right, Prince William ha and Catherine had their account at this time and Instagram wasn't as famous. But I mean, look, it's just, it fits the criteria. You know, she is the girl who cried wolf. So I don't know. It just fits too yeah, well. It does. It does fit. Yeah. Love to know your thoughts. So now we have articles like this one in the mirror going, Meghan Markle's American Riviera Orchard is undermined by fake accounts on Instagram. So in the subtitle, it says it has over half a million followers, but a high presence of fake followers could undermine the authenticity and trustworthiness of her online presence. I'm sorry, did someone just use the word trustworthiness <laughs> in the same sentence as Meghan Markle? Because what <laughs> it's funny because undermine the authenticity and trustworthiness of her online presence two things that she has hasn't had since at least since mexit but i would even argue before mexit she's never been in the same state as authenticity and trustworthiness <laughs> let alone had anything in common with them right i know like what that's why i feel like this is coming from her team yep. making it out like here it, it really to me it really it's the, this first paragraph is um, quite telling. The Duchess of Sussex's new luxury lifestyle brand is being targeted by fake accounts on Instagram, which could threaten Meghan's credibility and trustworthiness, according to, as usual, an expert, an unnamed expert, so many of those floating around. What, what I will say is that credibility and trustworthiness are in inverted commas. Yes, and if you're not uh, looking at the screen, I, I am putting up screenshots um, of whatever paragraphs we're reading. Megan quietly launched her new lifestyle brand last month. I wouldn't say it was quiet given the timing of it during the Diana Awards where Prince William and her husband were presenting. I mean, her husband virtually. Yeah, again, something Megan doesn't have anything to do with. Being quiet. <laughs> Seriously, I, I wouldn't call that a quiet launch. I mean... She knows what she's doing, is, is, is what I'm trying to say. She knows it's not going to be quiet. And has already gained more than 570,000 followers, um, yada, yada, yada. Whilst the brand quickly earned more than half a million followers when it launched, all is not as... A, okay, they're repeating themselves, so... Yeah, because the more they repeat themselves, the more ads they can put on the page as you keep scrolling. <laughs> so, you know, most articles these days are just nonsense. So it says here specifically, the presence of 13.77% fake followers metric reveals a common challenge in digital brand management. Having 7.25% suspicious mass followers and 6.52% likely bots or fake accounts presents a significant threat to the integrity of her brand, which she doesn't have any. So how is there a threat? Yeah, integrity should have been in uh, inverted commas as well. Yeah. Um, really, this article is just a bunch of repeating the same paragraph in different ways. So I'm going to stop here. But the reason I think this is coming from Megan's camp is number one, as I already pointed out, the flipping the narrative and yep. making it look like she's a victim of bots targeting her. Because mm, she's only ever been a victim. She yeah. couldn't have ever been a perpetrator in her entire life. Yeah, no. she couldn't she couldn't buy followers herself. No, they she was just minding her own business. Yeah. And these bots found her, which is really interesting. Megan has such a such bad luck when it comes to mm. bots being affiliated with her. I mean, the ones that have been trying to undermine Catherine are all pro Megan bots. Mm, Gee. Interesting. Couldn't be the general populace knows when they see a fake person in front of them and wants nothing to do with them, <laughs> Megan. And so they have to buy bots. Again, theory. Theory, but it makes sense to us. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first red flag. You know, it's typical right out of her book. I'm not doing this. You know, this is happening to me. Mm. Except the article screams that it's her because of the words. Because it's a lot of repetition of nonsense as well. It's just yep. different paragraphs. It's word salad. And it's her favorite word. It's her favorite words of authenticity, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the thing is, if you were going to get someone else to write an article for you, you would maybe proofread it, make sure they didn't, you know, take any angles you didn't want to take. But you wouldn't 
almost borderline ghost write the article you, that yourself, right? You I, want someone else to do it. And I, she yeah. can't do that because she thinks that she's the only person who can do it right. She has to have full control. So, yeah, th- that's why. It's like if you want us to believe that someone else actually wrote this article, step away. Absolutely. It's funny you say that because you see that happen in Meghan and Harry's brand and even in um, from a feminine perspective, like a female perspective, her the way she dresses, you just know she's not listening to anyone. And she always thinks in every facet of her life, whether private or public, that she knows best. That is such a horrible mindset. It literally the worst people on the planet are people who think they know everything mm-hmm. and will not listen to anyone else. Yep. And we're just seeing one play out in the royal family. Yep. Now, so there's that first, what do you think? You think, do you agree that this is probably her pretending to be victimized by bots? It's just so her. It's so her. And she is the sort of person who, you know, (laughs) she's the sort of person who would instigate some sort of horrible thing and then be like, I was in the same room as that, even though it's her. And everyone knows it's her. Yeah. You know, she, this is just... You might as well put the seal on it. Yeah. Might as well have an MM on it. Yeah. No. <laughs> or, you know, not MM. She uses her um, her royal cipher. Oh, might as well put that on. Right. Legitimize it. I tell you what, when you said Duchess of Cambridge before, it's such a bre- uh, breath of fresh air because uh, hearing Duchess of Sussex is just, it's there. The words are cursed. You know, yeah. I can't stand to hear them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They've ruined them. Yep. I said this in my um, untitled video. At the end, I was like, I mean, realistically, what I think should happen is removal from the line of succession because the titles, they have rendered the titles absolutely meaningless. Yeah. Whoever else is the Duchess of Sussex next, I mean, you know, if anyone even remembers Meghan Markle at some point, I'm sure they will because she's been such a stain on society. But people will be like, oh, Duchess of Sussex, why doesn't that sound good to me? Why is that such a, like, just put the title on hold for a bit? Yeah. It's funny you say that. I was going to say the, the, the queen does. I mean, the royal family is known to do that yeah. when a title has been tarnished. Yeah. And I actually touch upon this in a future video that I've already you know scripted. So I'll leave it there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's been it's been known to happen um, in terms of holding titles. I mean, the, the main is the title is going to be on hold for at least another 200 years yeah. at this point. <laughs> Until Jeez. people forget or yeah. Um, the other telltale for me that makes me feel like this is uh, coming from Megan's camp are the numbers. 13.7%, that's it? Fake? No. I don't know. Because the other side is quoting numbers much higher than that. When I say other side, it's not the media. It's internet sleuths, you know, like detectives mm-hmm. and people who actually know how to do their, you know, how to do a good job. Yep. Analyzing, coming up with graphs, looking at the rate of new followers, what what prompts it. There's a whole science behind it. Yeah, it's almost statistics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's like social blade and you can just, we, you know, you can tell when there's something's off. Yeah. And these people who have been looking into it are like, <laughs> I think, we think it's a lot more than merely 13.77%. And I think you're exactly right that if this was written by them, they would, th- this is what they want the narrative to be. Oh, it's only a small percentage. The rest are genuine people. Straight up, the fact that the even the title, even the name of this brand is Word Salad, that is yeah. already evidence enough because uh, I hate to say it, but some people can't spell, especially if they're, you know, if they're just blindly following Megan. Yeah. You know, it's it's not an easy thing. It's not like you type in a few a few letters and you're there, right? Yeah. It's not like you would have accidental followers. Oh, this looks nice. No, it just all reeks of fakeness. Yeah, it really does. I mean, as you, the name itself. Yeah. The most pretentious thing ever. What? So, you know, we're getting towards the end, running out of time. Um, there have been also reports that, you know, this is it. This is Megan's final chance to make it because their money is very quickly running out, which is insane to me because people are saying they've amassed since Meg's it 135,000 either dollars or pounds. Um, I did have an article and it doesn't want to open up. So I'm going to have to go off by memory. But yeah, they've amassed quite a fortune since Megxit. So to be spending it is insanity. Yeah. I mean, considering that she is the person who begs for freebies yeah. everywhere she goes, uh, the fact that she's still bleeding that much money. It's insane. Yeah. So 
it makes me think, okay, people can say the point of Meg's it could have been money, which yes, absolutely. Megan, Megan has always wanted money because she sees money as um, a way to, you know, impose herself, not impose herself as a way to, um, oh, what's the word? Level herself up. Mm-hmm. You know, she thinks money is synonymous with status status which which it is in today's materialistic world don't get us wrong we're not you know uh, oblivious to that but it's the wrong way to look at things it is you know sometimes i say catherine is just she exudes royalty or being regal and it has nothing to do with the fact that she is royal she just some people just come across as regal yes yes yeah whether they have money or not so there's that, there's the money aspect, which, okay, you can argue they've succeeded and they made more money than they would have as royals. Uh, except that if you're a business and you spend more than you make, then you are at a loss. And if you do that for enough years, that and especially unplanned for, then your business has failed. So it's not about the amount of money they're making, it's about... How much of that money are they actually keeping? Or do they have to blow that money just to keep up their expensive, extra- extravagant lifestyle? It's funny you say that because when they filed their uh, R12 foundation or R12 just in general um, tax returns, they filed a loss. Mm-hmm. It's only their, what, second, third year of operations? So uh, all is not well on that front. And then there is the whole, as you said, the point of Megxit setting up a rival royal family. But Why? <laughs> It was already set up for you. You were loved. Mm -hmm. You had support. You had status, privilege. And no matter what answer you land on, basically is what I'm trying to say, it still doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. But this is the problem with people who are this delusional and this problematic is that nothing they do will ever make sense to a normal person. Could it be destruction purely purely for the sake of destruction it could because this sort of revenge or vengeance angle of no one's allowed to be better than me you know she realizes she can't be queen so then there can't be any queens left in the world yeah we you know? talked about how it's like popping the, the exactly. ball that no one else can play with it could be it could be because when you don't have some kind of a mentally disturbed mind it's hard to understand their motivations yeah because I'd like to say that almost any other person in this situation would not have squandered this opportunity. I'm not saying everyone's perfect, but I can tell you that just about anyone else on planet Earth would have done a better job than Megan. I love that you said that because, again, you're really uh, um, hinting at what's to come next on the, on the channel, my next video. And I haven't seen her script yet, so, you know. You, you know the general idea of what I'm trying to do, Ooh. but, um, yeah, I hope that gets you interested. Um, I'm aiming to release the first part because it's a multi-part. I think it's the first time, of, not the first time, but I have I don't do multi-part series. Mm. I think the first time I did it was, anyways, it doesn't matter. My point is I don't do them. So um, I'm quite excited because it fleshes out a lot of things and I go into a lot of detail, which I really enjoy doing and I really hope you will enjoy listening to that. Uh, so yeah. Well, the, the answer is we'll never know because we're not as mentally disturbed, really, yeah. as, as, as they both are, clearly. Yep. So let us know what you all think. Um, what was the point of Megxit in your eyes and the bots? Do you think she's being targeted? Poor Megan baby, Megzy baby, as Lady C says, which, you know, I haven't seen. I haven't watched Lady C since 2021. Wow by the way. So I don't know if she still says that, you know, I I might be old fashioned at this point. (laughs) I might be out of it. (laughs) That was so three years ago. That was so 2000. No, that's so 2021. (laughs) That was so pandemic. (laughs) Um, Yes. I'm not trying to make light of the pandemic. We live, we live through the horrors of it. Please. I know the internet's like, are you making fun of the pandemic? I lost someone to it. No, I'm not. So uh, anything else you want to say no. <laughs> before I, you know, get myself into trouble if I keep talking? <laughs> uh, no, I think I think we've covered everything. And um, yeah, I tell you what, though, if they are actually going to go bankrupt, if they're actually going to run out of money, and this would be the end of Megan's failed brands and mm. her just throwing her face everywhere, I would be relieved, honestly, because then it's just. The only reason she's done any of this is because she's just throwing Harry's money everywhere. 
Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't think she'll ever stop. I think she's delusional enough to think she can land another husband. And I'm not trying to be ageist. I'm a woman myself. Why would I say that, you know, no one wants an older woman? It's just fact. It sucks for us that yeah. for the most part, after a certain age, we're, you know, um, expired. I disagree. But the majority of society's perception is you're over a certain age. You're done for as a woman. Mm. You're not you're not eligible anymore. But Megan Doe doesn't think the rules apply to her in any way, shape or form. So well, it'll be interesting if the one good thing she can do, if there's one good thing she can do, it's destroy that whole stigma of older women can't can't bag, you know, a, a partner or something. <laughs> yeah. But again, it would be another another case of Megan attaching herself to a good cause. So, yeah, you're right. All right, everyone. Um, hope you enjoyed the episode. And as usual, let us know what you think in the comments. And we'll see you in the next one. See you then. Thanks for joining. Bye.